Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. If you have a noise like that coming from the rear of your truck, you're going to want to make sure you watch this video. And if you find that you need any parts, always check us out at 1AAuto.com. We'll ship those parts out to you fast and free. Now let's get into it. Diagnosing this issue will be easiest with a second person. That second person will be sitting in the rear of the vehicle on one side. We'll be driving down the road. We want to make sure that they're listening. They're trying to hear that humming noise. Can you hear it on the driver's side of the vehicle? If it seems like it's faint, go ahead and make your way over to the passenger side of the vehicle. While they're over there, they're trying to hear if it gets louder or less prominent. If it's louder on one side of the vehicle than the other, typically it's going to be a wheel bearing issue of some sort. Also, while we're on this road test, we wanna to try to accelerate and decelerate rapidly. So essentially just try to take off. I'm trying to listen to hear if I can hear a clunking noise coming from that drive line. If you do hear a clunk, you might have some serious internal rear differential damage, something you want to pay attention to. The next thing that you would want to do for the diagnosis process would be to safely raise and support the rear of the vehicle so both of those wheels are up and off the ground. We'll make our way underneath here to where the drive shaft connects onto the rear differential. Take hold of this and wiggle it up and down, left and right, and even give it a little twist. If you can feel movement in this area, or worse, a clunking noise while you're trying to lift it up and down or side to side, that means you have a serious internal differential issue and you might have an issue with the pinion bearing right up in here. Now the next thing we want to do is have the second person up inside the vehicle. They're going to have it running with it in drive. We're trying to listen for that noise. Obviously you want to be extremely careful of the drive shaft that is spinning directly above our heads. If you can't hear the noise by ear like this, you can also use a stethoscope of some sort or even a long pry bar. We're listening for vibration. In this instance, I can hear it pretty clearly. If you have a hard time hearing it, you can ask the person inside the vehicle to accelerate and decelerate. While this is happening, we want to pay attention to several areas on the differential. Right up along the front where that pinion gear is that I was talking to you about, along the tube, all the way down to where your outer axle bearings would be located. We're trying to pinpoint where the loudest point of noise is coming from. Keep in mind, that vibration and sound will travel through your hollow differential tubes. So if you're having an issue with one of your axle bearings, you might actually hear that making its way all the way out here to the differential pumpkin. The next thing that we always like to do is check the fluid. In most cases, you're going to have to drop the entire diff pan, which we will do. But on ours in particular, we do have a little drain plug, which is great because I can pull it out, catch a little bit of that fluid and give it a close inspection. Looking at this fluid, I can tell that it's extremely dark and it's been a while since it's been changed. Looking at it with the light, I can also see some metal fragments in there. No large chunks, but definitely a little bit of metal flakes. Now, most of these differentials will not have a drain plug. So when you're taking down the diff pan, you want to make sure you have a collection bucket under this area so you can recycle that fluid properly. Now that we have the diff cover out of the way, we have a nice clear view of the inside of your rear differential. Looking in here, you can see that there's several gears. You have this larger one that makes its way all the way around. And then you have several smaller ones inside this center area. And if you look real close, all the way down near the front there, that's where your pinion gear is located. You wanna inspect each one of these gears. Make sure it doesn't look like they're chipped, damaged, worn, or anything the like. Once you've given the internals of the differential a quick inspection and you're sure that there's no damage in there, that would tell me that it's time to move along to those axle bearings, which are located out by the brakes near the wheels. Now, when you're doing these axle bearings, you're going to have to have the rear differential cover off just like we have it here. After that, you would also want to make sure that you remove the wheels and the brakes on both sides. Because whenever I do an axle bearing with the seal, I do them at the same time. Most of the work is going to be done by doing just one of the bearings. You might as well just do them both at the same time. Remove the wheel with all lug nuts. <laughs> now we can move along to removing the caliper. While doing so, make sure that you put no pressure on the flex hose or your ABS wire if you have one in this area. I'll just carefully separate these two for now. <laughs> oh. 
A quick inspection of our brakes. It only makes sense. If you need them, go ahead and order them from 1AAuto.com. Now that I have the brakes apart, we're going to continue back in the center here. In the center of most of your rear differentials, you're going to have a pin that goes in between the two ends of the axle inside here. That pin will be held in place with some sort of bolt typically. I'll be using an eight millimeter to remove said bolt and then I can slide this out of here. You wanna be extremely careful with it. You don't want it to fall and hit the ground and potentially break or hurt you. So now we'll just continue on spinning this, making sure that this dowel does not come out. Now that I have it at this angle, I'm going to reach up in here and push this down. As I said before, once this is out, you cannot spin the axles. Otherwise, you will have an issue with the gears falling out of place. Now I'll be on the outside. I'm going to push that axle inward and then remove the locking clip from inside the differential. Now we can remove that locking clip. Give it a quick inspection. And if you're doing both sides bearings, as I recommend, go ahead and do the same to the other side of the vehicle. From out here, we'll take hold of that axle and carefully start removing it. Keep in mind, it is heavy. With the axle out of the way, we have a clear view of our axle seal. And then directly behind it will be the bearing that we are replacing. To remove that seal, you can either use a seal remover or a pry bar of some sort. Keep in mind, there could be fluid in this area. Now to get this bearing out of here, you're going to have to have a slide hammer of some sort. We need a tool that makes its way behind the bearing, grips onto it, and we'll pull it straight on out of there. Now that I have this safely in place, I'll continue on with that slide hammer. I'm going to be pulling this rearward towards me. So of course I want to be extremely careful. Nothing comes flying out and potentially hurts me. Now with that out of there, let's make sure we clean and inspect the entire tube. Make sure there's no metal fragments inside this area or damage to the differential itself. Now that I have this side cleaned up, it's time to install our brand new bearing. Take that bearing and slide it right into place. We want to have this as even as possible so when we start driving it into the proper position, we know it's seated perfectly. The next thing you're going to want to have is a bearing driver. Looks like this. It needs to fit directly over that race, but also need to be able to slide inside the tube a little bit. Now, while I was driving that in, I could hear an audible difference. It went from tap, tap, tap to bonk, bonk, bonk. That means that this is completely bottomed out against the tube. I'll just carefully put my finger in here, being careful not to pinch it in any way, but just double check to make sure it is secured all the way inside that tube. Now it's time to install our seal. Now that we have the new bearing and seal properly in place, let's continue on with some gear oil. We want to make sure we lubricate that bearing and also put some inside the tube of the differential. Now I'll use my glove finger, reach inside here and work that bearing around a little bit. I want to make sure that it's well lubricated. Now we can get ready to install our axle. Before we do so, you want to pay attention all the way in this area, closest to the outboard part of the axle. This is where the seal and the bearing will sit. Make sure it doesn't have any strange grooves or damage in any way. This one feels fine. I'll take this and start putting it in position. While I bring this in, you can turn it just a tiny bit to get it to align with the inner portion of the differential, but you never want to spin it a whole bunch. Like I said before, you don't want to damage or misalign those little gears inside the differential. You want to make sure that you put a rag over all of your gears and then scrape down the gasket area on the outside of your differential pumpkin where that pan is going to sit. Obviously, you don't necessarily need to remove all of the gasket maker if you had that. Just try to remove as much as possible. Aside from that, it's a good idea to wipe down the internals a little bit. Typically, you will find a little bit of existing gear oil inside the bottom here. So just go ahead and use a rag and get it all out of there as much as possible. Then you can continue on with your two locking clips. We'll take this one and slide it on one axle and take the other one and slide it on the other. Once I have that in the proper position, I'm going to reach from the outside, grab onto the axle and give it a little tug. 
That pulls the clip into the proper locked position and it will not fall out. Do the same on the other side here. If you don't feel like reaching around from the outside, generally you can also push it from the inside. Now we can take our pin, we'll slide this into the proper position, making sure that we have this hole lined up with the hole in the differential. Should want to press right up in there. Try to hold it so it's centered. Now we're going to rotate this until we can put in that mounting bolt. Now at this point, you want to make sure this is nice and snug so there's no way this can loosen up and that pin can come out. If that comes out, it's going to cause serious damage to the differential, not to mention the axles themselves could also come out. Obviously, you want to torque it to manufacturer specification. Now we can continue on putting on the pan. Make sure you clean the backside and apply some new gasket, whether you're using gasket maker or a gasket in general. Once you have them all snug, make sure you torque them to manufacturer specification. Now, assuming you use gasket maker to seal the pan against the differential, you want to make sure that you wait at least a few hours for it to dry. Go ahead and run your finger along the edge and double check to make sure there is no gasket maker on your fingers. Assuming that is dry, you can continue on with the manufacturer specified fluid. When you're filling your differential, you only want to go till it starts coming out of the fill hole. Once you've done that, you can continue on to putting in your fill plug. Now at this point, once you have everything together, you're going to want to double check to make sure that the noise is gone. Go ahead and start up the vehicle, put it in drive, and listen for that howling noise. Assuming it's gone, you're good to go. Okay friends, now I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it interesting. If there was something in this video that you think might help somebody, go ahead and share it with them. If you like the video or love the video, go ahead and smash on that like button for me. It would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. Ring the bell. That way they're you, all of your friends can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks.